Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, a top star in WWE is sick of Roman Reigns. AEW <laughs> and Warner Brothers Discovery have failed to come to terms on a new TV deal. We got some backstage news on Paul White. And, well, and a missing WWE star undergoes major surgery. I'm Adam Wilborn. I'm bamboozled. And this is the news. <laughs> no idea what to make of anything in the world at the moment. <laughs> uh, but hey, look, we're gonna. <laughs> Talk about LA Knight. Yeah. He's uh, sick of Roman Reigns not defending his belt. Mm -hmm. He's done a really good promo, basically, on the bump here. And I just, I don't know, it's a slow news day. I wanted to talk about it. <laughs> um, and he's the best. Yeah, like, I'm not going to read it in his voice or anything because I'm terrible at impressions, but he's done a really good promo. Mm -hmm. uh, hyping up the match on Saturday, which will be Roman Reigns' number five title defense of 2023. Jesus. It's his first one since SummerSlam, which was three months ago. <laughs> Becky Lynch really hit the nail on the head with that promo on Raw as well. Yeah, she, she did. She Ooh. absolutely knocked it out of the park. Uh, I'll just read it to you. I'm going to tell you my assessment. My assessment is that everybody is sick of that. Uh, talking about Roman not defending the belt. Here's a guy who's got about one title defense every three, four months, four defenses a year, and we're celebrating the fact that he's been champion for 1,200 days. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> uh, he continued, 1,200 days, as impressive as that is, can come to a halt real quick mm -hmm. when you find yourself on the business end of a BFT, and that's a BLT. He's eating a sandwich. That's immediately what I yeah. thought of us as well. I mean, I, every single time I hear that. Yeah. Um, and that's what I think what we're going to find at Crown Jewel. And then he just, he calls it tyranny. He like goes into some kayfabe stuff. So, but I think it raises an interesting point on the, t the frequency of title yeah. defenses, which is why I kind of put it in here. There's a lot of discourse <laughs> on this stuff these days, right? And MJF gets it as well because he's not defending the title every month or whatever, whatever. Personally, I think it's absolutely fine, yeah. right? Like, I, I'm, I, I'm in favor of a world champion who holds up the belt's prestige. For me, a world title shouldn't be defended every month. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be like a world, I've got 56 defenses. Like the world title should not be defended in the way that Orange Cassidy's international title was defended, right? No. Where he has like 29 defenses or whatever. Roman should withhold his prestige by only doing it like once every two or three months. Now, is there a valid argument that Roman should maybe be on TV a little bit more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Uh, should he maybe work a couple matches here and there more? Uh, yeah, maybe. He should um, be on bloody Survivor Series. 100%, 100%. <laughs> uh, but this is obviously a kayfabe interview that we've gone over. That being said, yeah, I, I mean, I think there's a bit of merit. Yeah, I, I think it's one of those things, isn't it? I think WWE are slightly more protected from that now they've got the World Heavyweight Championship, even though that does feel like a lesser world title. Um, but I, I'm inclined to agree with you as well, because like, other than like LA Knight, maybe I'll, I'll bite on a BFT on Saturday, right? And I'll <laughs> I, bite into a BLT I, whilst again, I'm eating it. Oh. I went straight to sandwich. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but if Roman was defending every month, like, would you buy any of the title changes? Yeah, this is it's it. It's going to be... LA Knight, uh, uh, he's not going to defend it at Survivor Series, but I hope he's involved in some sort of War Games type of match. He's probably going to defend it at the Royal Rumble, and we all know the title's probably not going to change the hands there. And then he's going to lose it at WrestleMania 40. So him working, you know, uh, I can't say fast lane because that's not now where it is in the calendar. Him working Elimination Chamber, there for you example, go. you're just not going to think his title's going to change hands because just because he's fighting Grace and Bloody Waller in Australia, it's not going to be. Yeah. But it is funny how Roman has gone from the guy who was like, I'm going to take this bloody title off. Brock Lesnar holding a goddamn hostage to exactly that person. <laughs> it's kind of, and it's interesting as well to like gauge the goodwill that Roman has to an extent versus Brock, who everyone was like, ah, oh, I, yeah. I believe he's never here. It's, I just, like, I'm not commenting on that. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I just think it's fun to watch, like, but it play out. Do you think Roman Reigns should defend the title more often? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section Are below. you sick of his tyranny? Like, LA Knight? Yeah. Yep. No, I'm not, but that was yeah. Josie had to do because you said the, his yeah. name. Uh, anyway, uh, let's move over to AEW's TV deal. AEW is not getting a new TV deal, it's, Andy. It's, it's causing down! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> AEW is not getting a TV deal yet. yet. Uh, yeah, they failed to come to terms on an agreement encompassing TV rights, uh, pay-per-views, and the promotions library. But the relationship's still all good. Five for Select for reporting on this. Uh, per the outlet, Khan has a particular value that he believes the AEW library is worth. Uh, the media group is very happy with its AEW partnership. Uh, they're looking for it to continue despite this deal not being formalized, falling through somewhat. Uh, now, I will say Warner's budget could be impacted somewhat uh, by the NBA rights. 
that are going to be up for grabs yeah. uh, soon and expecting a huge rights deal increase for 2025, 2026. So that could have been a bit of a stumbling block here. Yeah, I, I, it sounds to me like they're just still in negotiations. Yeah. And I think Warner probably, like NBA is worth more to them than, than wrestling, obviously. So they will, they will probably prioritize that. Uh, I guess it depends on when that deal expires and stuff, but there's all kinds of ramifications because uh, NBC Universal, who will be bidding for Raw and SmackDown, uh, no, sorry, Raw and NXT, SmackDown's already wrapped. Yeah. Um, if they pursue the NBA rights and they get them and they pay a lot of money, it would mean less money in the pot for WWE. So that might end up going elsewhere. Also, if they, if they, um, if if TNT, sorry, Warner, end up losing the NBA, they'll have more money for the pot for wrestling. So it becomes a very interesting knock-on. Yeah. Things. And I will say this, people will sit there and say, well, Tony Khan's a billionaire. Yeah, but he's still not going to say, okay, yeah, you can have our TV rights for a dollar. Yeah. It's it's a negotiation, it's a business. I, I am often surprised, Andy, by how many experts there are about TV rights on Twitter. Well, the thing that, the thing that gets me is, um, you know, you, the, you know, the, you know <laughs> the people who will be like, oh, AW is making monumental losses every year, and it's like you don't know that. No. When have you seen the accounts, my friends? Like, when have it's you sold. seen this private company's accounts? It's like sold eighty thousand yeah. tickets at Wembley. It's ludicrous. I mean, they might well still be in the red, but the idea that they're just hemorrhaging money to me yes. is like, what are you basing that on? It's Assumption. not WCW. Yeah, and it's like the thing is, if it was a publicly traded company like WWE, where they have to release their accounts every year, yes. you could use evidence, but you. Have have zero. Um, another thing from this report we should probably mention is that uh, Fightful asked about the ratings, which have obviously been not in the best place mm -hmm. uh, in 2023. And um, it's Warner, at least in terms of overall viewership, the, the ratings still great. Obviously. Yeah, a, a Warner uh, person said that like the current situation is nothing they hadn't foreseen, uh, especially with them going head-to-head -head with football and stuff. So that doesn't sound yes. like it's going to affect things. Too it's like when people just randomly invented, if they don't do a million, they're going to be off telly. Yeah, what? People still do that, man. It's like, mm. you haven't even hit a million. It's like arbitrary made-up bollocks. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Paul White, let's talk about him. No more BS. Let's get, yeah. hey, there you are. No he's more back. BS. Let's talk and about And he's brought him. his knees with him. Well, that's mean. <laughs> that's mean. Yeah. He's a better I'm, physical I'm glad shape he's, than me. Yeah, he's, I'm glad he's back uh, doing what he loves. Well, that's I'm flipping tall. I'm flipping well. That's the news. Next story. No, uh, just Fightful had some backstage info on this uh, situation. So they actually confirmed before the show that it was gonna be Paul. I, everyone knew the game yeah. was gonna be like guy mm. uh, geezer Chris Jericho has been teasing it for weeks and weeks, and he it was pulled off last night. Obviously, you can hear more from Simon Miller on Ups and Downs. Oh. We're not reviewing the show here. Also, the podcast channel, biggest podcast in the world, uh, they'll have a review over there as well. Uh, now, Fifle noted uh, interestingly that uh, White had actually been discussed for a match with Satnam Singh, some kind of match involving those two issues. Ooh. I highly doubt they were going to go one on one, uh, but that was discussed for All In. It didn't come to fruition. Instead, we got that angle with Grado and and the Governor. Shout out to Gogo. -Go. Hey. Why is he not on TV? The guy rules. He's awesome. Um, and Jarrett and all those all those people. That that happened on the pre-show of All In. Uh, Fifle noted, interestingly, a working plan for White to wrestle some kind of match at full gear in his return. Obviously, the the four-on-four -four street fight with White, Omega, Jericho, and Kota Ibushi mm -hmm. has been scheduled for the 15th episode. 15th of November. Yeah, I assume that's going to be full gear as well, yeah. Dynamite. So, yeah. Uh, White hasn't wrestled since a Dark Elevation taping last March. He's had some surgeries and, and, yes. and things and stuff. Uh, his last pay-per-view match was All Out 2020 when he squashed QT Marshall. That was fun. Was I rolled my eyes here when they announced it and then it was really fun. Yeah. Look, I have nothing against Paul White. I, I think he's, he comes across as a very nice human yes. being. And I find him very charming on commentary and stuff. Yeah. Um, but the, the reaction from AEW fans to this has been uh, largely negative, mm -hmm. I think it's fair to say. Uh, I, I don't know. Like, I had a hard time with last night's Dynamite for a good many reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but I... I don't want to bury this. But... Paul White's a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and I, look at the bloody yeah. size of him. If you're going to take on someone like Powerhouse Hobbs, you get a giant in, and as Chris Jericho says, uh, I saw people already booking the superplex spot to break, break the bloody ring, hence why they might be doing it on Dynamite rather than full gear, who knows? Uh, my sources, you know, I've got my little birds with an AEW. Tell me he's not going to do that spot, Andy. He's going to do Kenny Omega's Terminator dive. So. <laughs> and he heard it here first. The shooting star press as well, why not? But yeah. Paul White's a lovely guy, so let's not yeah, be. I don't want to be mean about the creative man. I, 
Yes. We'll, we'll do that on the podcast later. Yeah. Uh, finally, Eric of the Viking Raiders uh, has undergone neck fusion surgery. He posted about it on Instagram. Uh, there was a photo from his hospital bed. There is with his wife, Sarah Rowe, a.k.a. Valhalla. She wasn't in gimmick in hospital. Imagine. Uh, he was at St. Vincent's Hospital in Birmingham, Alabama for C6 and C7 vertebrae fusion surgery. Uh, it was successful. It's always terrifying when I hear those numbers and letters and words put together. Uh, he posted, I can't express the proper gratitude and thankfulness to the amazing Dr. Cordova and his amazing staff uh, at the hospital. Um, and to WWE for always making sure I have the best care possible. C6, C7 fusion surgery was successful. Recovery begins now. I'm excited for all the f- possibilities once my cybernetic upgrades come fully online. There was a nice post as well from his partner Ivar who posted, can't wait to reveal our new tag name upon your return, the neck fusion experience. Yeah, Ivar, stuff. Ivar of course had his own neck fusion in 2020. He was out for seven months. Uh, so yeah, no word on when uh, Eric will be back. Uh, but long road ahead, we wish him all the best. Yeah. Uh, I didn't realize that his injury situation was no. this bad. So yeah, it was pretty shocking to read this, but he look, look at the photo, man. He's smiling, he's yeah. like, you know, he, he's looking positive. Uh, so best wishes to him in his recovery. Uh, the Ivar singles run has been very oh. fun so far. Hope that continues. Give me the Gunther match. Yeah, so it's like, you know, there's Ivar can do this. It's not like a case of the old WWE where if your tag team partner got injured, you were off. Like, you were not booking you. Yeah. Um, he's going to keep doing that, presumably. And Eric will be back someday, and it'll be fun. And their stock will have risen multi- yeah. in a multitude of ways. Ivar's going to have this fun run, and people are going to be like, hey, Ivar, this is, we're into this. This is over. This is cool. And then Eric's going to come back. He's going to be like, hey, he's his tag partner. I miss that guy. They're going to be super over. Yeah, it's going to be great. He's getting loads of plaudits. We've reported on it when these matches with like Kofi and stuff. And eventually, if, if he's, imagine he's getting, he's turned babyface, and he's getting his ass handed to him by some little weasels. There's like six of them beating him down, little and then Eric stinkers. comes back. Yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah. Get well soon, Eric. Though. Yeah, That's the main 100%. thing. 100%. Uh, right, let's move over to your questions. At what culture WWE on X, of course, if you want to ask us. Uh, first question today comes from Daniel Murphy. He says, good morning to the only news crew that matters. Oh, Fats. take that, Moira Stewart. <laughs> Is she still in the game? I think so. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> with how Dynamite ended, do you see MJF going over at full gear, then facing everyone he's wronged? Ooh. Or do you see him losing the title and still facing them? Thanks and slay the day. You slay too, Daniel. I think he goes over yeah. uh, uh, full gear. And and I think uh, they're going to do some kind of dramatic suspense with him and his contract at, at World's End. Yeah. I don't think it'll be quite as like framed in the same way as the CM Punk thing in WWE because that was a lot different. CM Punk was the babyface raging against the company. With MGF, I think it, they'll they'll go for a different angle uh, to that. He won't just be like, screw AEW or anything like that, um, which he would do as a heel. So I think he carries it at least to World's End. I think he beats Jay White. And uh, I hope they've got something really cool cooking up. Yeah, I think I think in a weird way, as always with this weird weirdness that we enjoy, Jay White getting the pinfall last night made me think, oh, cool. So yeah, MJF's retaining. But they, they they've gonna you know the line them up. Yeah, they, they've set it all up. And yeah, I don't think you showcase everyone, Joe Wardlow, etc., and not do world title matches for that, as much as I would yeah. love to. I mean, MJF could sell you in singles matches without a title still. But Adam, who should he face at World's End? Ooh. Grab it. Uh. <laughs> Adam! Who we got? The last match before he leaves for the Fed. MJF, World's End, World Title Defense. Oh, this is screwed up to the... Uh, no, I'm gonna pick one that's screwed up. I think up. it says Killian and Bappy. Uh, sorry, this is terrible audio for the... Buddy Matthews! That'd be fun. I like Buddy, yeah, why not? Buddy rules. He's great against Kenny Omega, so. He was. Um, Who you got? If not Buddy Matthews, <laughs> Luchasaurus. Okay. <laughs> He's a heel. <laughs> I, would, I would like to see Christian Cage and MJF go back and forth on the microphone, please. Oh, mate, yeah. uh, Mark Smith says, good, hey, good looking, and Adam Wilborn. Hey. Thanks, Mark. You got it the right way around. Uh, which would be better? Damien Priest unsuccessfully cashes in on Drew this Saturday with uh, with Drew taking his place in the Judgment Day, or a successful cash in on Road, Rody, <laughs> Rody Codes. <laughs> What's he doing at the Impact Zone? <laughs> uh, successful cash in on Cody on the Raw after Mania. What do you make of Drew uh, joining the Judgment Day? Yeah, uh, not for me personally. No. Not for me. I kind of like the Scottish Warrior uh, as his own kind of thing. Uh, look, I love the Judgment Day. I think they are the foremost group of little stinkers in wrestling <laughs> today. I've enjoyed them from day one. Uh, I like their energy. I like their vibe. I like everything they've got. Well, maybe not 
the guy who you shouldn't JD don't Google me. Yes. Um, but <laughs> but I love everything else about them, and uh, so it's not a case of me thinking this would suck. Uh, personal preference. Uh, I like both of these things, but I like them separately. If you're forcing me to choose between those two, Mark, it's the unsuccessful cash-in. For sure. Uh, because I don't want Cody to win the title and then immediately lose it after WrestleMania, if I'm funny. honest. That'd be so funny for wouldn't it? Oh. I finished the story one night later. Oh. <laughs> New story. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do like the idea of Drew in the Judgment Day, but I like the idea of, of Drew doing anything right now because he's just kicking AS. Kicking AS. And uh, I had an interesting bit of booking for the... Damien Priest cashing aside, the Damien Priest versus Cody match for our Crown Jewel preview that's coming your way uh, tomorrow, I believe. Mm. You know, the video for that is going to be out tomorrow. Predictions. Let's giving our predictions on that one. You will be surprised, I promise. Uh, final question today comes from Robert Smith, who says, "Do you think the person behind the Devil Mask could be dun, 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 Jungle Boy, Jungle B? Oh boy." <laughs> um. um. I mean, when the fir they first ran the angle, the person in the devil mask was very slight. Mm. Like, the, uh, maybe it was just the angle it was shot at, but they looked quite slender. They looked they're not particularly broad-shouldered. Mm -hmm. And Jungle Boy is of that build. He's obviously in incredible physical shape, but physically he's just not as broad as some of yeah. the other people. He's not Powerhouse Hobbs, for Yeah, example. exactly. <laughs> and he, he's not MJF. Yeah. Like, you know, MJF's a bulky dude. Um, so... Physically, it fits the profile, I think. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, like, personally, I wouldn't do it. Mm. I think this jungle... Okay, this jungle boy heel character has been whack as fuck. Um, and, and I hope that they come... Tell me what you really think. I hope that they come up with something better for Jack Perry. Yeah. When he comes back, because it's been fucking shit so far. Um, I think he's very talented, but I, this isn't natural. So. It is going to be interesting to see the reaction he gets yeah. coming back. And if you bring him back as the devil screwing over or being involved with MJF, that might change the reception for it all. Uh, what, what do you think, before we finish up, what do you think about the theory surrounded by the Doja Cat video that Britt Baker in the video is like, mm, uh, she devil, did a, yep. she's slight, and what do you think of all that? Yeah, I mean, I jokingly said it was Britt Baker from day one, so I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the Doja Cat video was really well done. Yeah, really well done. Awesome crossover although, as well. Although, like, flipping, I looked at the Reddit thread when it came out, and I learned a lot about jo Doja Cat that I didn't already know. Oh. So don't Google her if you okay. don't want... Uh, gee whiz, she's an interesting person. Do you know who my thought who the devil is? Who's that? That's some interesting theories, Jungle Boy, you know, Don Callis. Uh, the, 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 the. Turbo Floyd, you heard it here first. Oh yeah. <laughs> you want to get that devil character over, you give it to that man, you give him some goddamn mic time. Give it to the youngest man alive, uh, baby. And if you're not the youngest man alive, which you can't possibly because that's Turbo Floyd and, what's his partner called? <laughs> Truth have, Magnum. Truth Magnum. <laughs> Sorry, Truth. Uh, if hey, you're not one of them. They're fans of the brand. Hey, and if you're fans of the brand, that's a better segue. Check out this video. Bye.